The Sun, the heart of our solar system, is a yellow dwarf star, a hot ball of glowing gases. Its gravity holds the solar system together, keeping everything from the biggest planets to the smallest particles of debris in its orbit. The Parker Solar Probe is going to be the first piece of human engineering that will fly less than 4 million miles above the surface of the Sun, directly through its blazing hot atmosphere. It's going to actually touch the Sun's corona. It'll be cool. Actually, it won't be cool. It'll be hot. This craft will face heat and radiation like no spacecraft before. It's not a journey that any human can make, but let's imagine for a second. What if you fell into the sun? What would you see, experience, and finally what would happen to you while passing through the sun's layers? This is Googleplex, and here is what would happen if you fell into the sun. Greek myths are hardly a realistic lens through which to view the world, but the tragedy of Icarus is a lesson that's true in any context. If you get too close to the sun, you will die. There are no exceptions to this rule. But how close could a person get to the sun realistically before burning up? The most obvious problems are the heat from the sun and the radiation it emits. The technology in our current spacesuits really isn't designed to withstand deep space. A standard spacesuit will protect an astronaut by temperatures of up to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Still great in most instances, but extremely poor for trying to touch the sun. The sun is about 93 million miles away from Earth, and it's at about 3 million miles from the surface that temperatures would scorch up to above 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Relatively speaking, this is still pretty close. It would then be a matter of time before the astronaut died. Above 248 degrees, the suit would transform into a close-fitting sauna. The temperature would climb above 125 degrees Fahrenheit and the person would become dehydrated and pass out, eventually dying of heat stroke. But let's assume that your spacesuit is made of hypothetical compound that can survive maximum temperatures of the sun. Your brand new sci-fi movie suit would take you all the way down to the sun's core and would protect you from the destructive environment that the sun has to offer, such as the huge temperatures, lack of oxygen, deadly radiation, and its enormous pressure. No need to worry about oxygen when you're about to go through one of the sun's layers. At this point, you approach the corona, the outermost region of the sun, starting out at 2100 kilometers above the surface and extending out to some 5 million kilometers. Oddly, however, unlike the Earth, where the temperature of the atmosphere decreases with height, the corona is actually by far the hottest part of the sun where temperatures go up to a few million degrees Fahrenheit. Why this is the case is still somewhat of a stellar mystery. Certainly, if you are gradually falling and made it to this point, the temperature is already absurd, and the radiation too. If not for your super cool science fiction spacesuit, you'd be already dead. But what if you were in a regular spacesuit? What would happen then? Well, first things first, you would disintegrate. At this temperature, most of the molecules that make up our bodies could not even survive. They would break apart, leaving only loose atoms. And then, temperature is enough to vaporize everything you've got. A different color for each element present in your body. But even that won't be seen because of the already well-lit spectrum of the sun. You would be turned into plasma, the fourth state of matter, just charged particles, and dispersed by the magnetic fields and solar winds. But let's return to our special science fiction spacesuit and continue our journey to the sun. After a very long time of falling, as you pass through the corona, the temperature would have dropped to 7800 degrees Fahrenheit and you would be within the chromosphere. This layer of the sun is located between 400 kilometers and 2100 kilometers above the solar surface. The chromosphere has temperatures around 4000 degrees Kelvin at the base and 8000 degrees Kelvin at the top. It emits a reddish glow as superheated hydrogen burns off, but the red rim can only be seen during a total solar eclipse. 
At other times, light from the chromosphere is usually too weak to be seen. The chromosphere may play a role in conducting heat from the interior of the sun to its outermost layer, the corona. Because the gravity of the sun is so strong, you would be descending roughly 28 times faster than if you were falling towards Earth. And in no time, you would reach the lowest layer of the sun's atmosphere, photosphere. It is about 400 kilometers thick. This layer is where the sun's energy is released as light. Because of the distance from the sun to earth, light reaches our planet in about 8 minutes. Here you would be faced with temperatures exceeding 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The photosphere is marked by bright bubbling granules of plasma and darker, cooler sunspots which emerge when the sun's magnetic field breaks through the surface. As soon as you reach the sun itself, you would sink. The gravity on the surface is 28 times that of Earth. The temperature is about 6,000 degrees Celsius. Humans can't survive 28 Gs for long. But let's carry on. There's no solid surface just like there's no surface to Uranus. The sun's density is 1.4 times that of water. So you would be sucked inside, kind of. Except that there are convection currents. If you happen to be just above one, you might be kept close to the surface. But finally, the eddies would entrain you sideways until you came to a downdraft that would take you downwards. Eventually, you, not me, I'm out of there, would cycle between two layers in a convection cell, moving you up and down, above and below the depth where the density of the gas is the same as the density of your body. But what if your sci-fi spacesuit would be able to help you to dive even deeper, where you would eventually reach the core? Unsurprisingly, no one would survive a stroll on the hot ball of plasma. Gravitational attraction here produces immense pressure and temperature, which can reach more than 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Hydrogen atoms get compressed and fused together, creating helium. This process is called nuclear fusion. This would be the final stage of your journey. Sorry, but there would be no coming back except if you have a teleportation device, but that's a story for another video. Conclusion: The sun is hot. So I guess there's one thing for sure about all of this. You're going to need some sunscreen. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then hit the like button and subscribe to Googleplex for much more to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.